When something has to work, it just has to work. When society builds something, somewhere someone intends for it to last a long time. But what is long enough? I guess long enough is to the point where we've gotten all we can out of that infrastructure. There are things that our society has built that ended up lasting, but I think we've gotten away from building things to last. Unfortunately, the world became governed by too much bean counting, and engineers have fallen for the most economical projects. Cheapest is not best. Welcome to Built to Last. I'm your host, Ted Bennett. In this series, I will be looking at things that we built that just worked. And when they worked, they worked for a long time. I'm curious to find out what makes infrastructure endure the ages and how modern designers can recapture that so that we can again build to last. Hey, welcome back to the aquifer. I'm Ted Bennett, and today I'm gonna to take you on a tour of the city of Cincinnati's Old River Pump Station. River Pump Station in Cincinnati, Ohio. The largest crank and flywheel, triple expansion, water pumping steam engines in the world. This facility is truly what I would call built to last infrastructure. Dating from the high point of steam power in the late 19th century, River Pump Station was fitted with four 1,000 horsepower steam-driven pumps, each pump delivering up to 30 million gallons of water per day. At 104 feet tall in height and weighing 1,400 tons each, the pump-engine combinations are absolutely the thing of modern engineering legend. River Pump Station came about after several attempts by the city to secure a reliable and safe drinking water source. In the late 19th century, Cincinnati was plagued by typhoid outbreaks, an unpredictable water supply from the Ohio River, and several failed pump systems designed by in-house staff. Recognizing a need for a new course and a lasting permanent solution, the city opted to hire steam engineering experts, R.D. Wood, to design the pump and engines. Wood delivered a state-of-the-art, double-acting, triple-expansion steam engine. The engines were both bulletproof and, for the day, sustainable, using steam pressure through three sequential cylinders. Construction work began on River Pump Station in 1898, and after a number of significant construction challenges, in 1906, the pumps began delivering millions of gallons of Ohio River water to nearby settling reservoirs. The city of Cincinnati now had their raw water source. Remarkably, River's pump station operated with no major repair work or rehabilitation during its extraordinary 57-year run. But sadly, in the 1960s, electric power had overtaken steam. River station's run ended. And with that, the chapter of American history powered by steam, our industrial revolution, quietly closed. 
So why did River Station last? What is unique about how it was built? As I walk through River Station and put my hands on the pumps and engines, I can't help but feel the presence of all those designers and laborers. Their know-how and ingenuity is testimony to how things are built to last. From the start, hiring experts R.D. Wood for the critical pump equipment put the right team in the right place. When I see agencies picking engineers based on how well they turn in qualification requests or fill out firm forms, it turns my stomach. Writing proposals or putting together flashing marketing packages has nothing to do with design engineering. And what's more is that sometimes design work today goes to the lowest bidding engineer. This is where our industry falls short often. Well-intentioned selection processes just run amok and they miss the point. Today, modern pumps will be expected to last maybe 10 years, but those pumps are gonna run at something like 3,600 RPM. The steam pumps at River Station operated at only a deliberate 15 and one half RPM. Run the infrastructure at well below capacity certainly helped River Station last a long time. On River Station, the city chose to stick with the tried and true, steam power. Steam got them a long way into the future. And River Pump Station's designers even ingeniously planned for the future. Take the critical gear drive on the pump. If a binding or a failure were to occur, the pump or engine could be damaged severely. And knowing this, the engineers built a failure path into the engine, applying wooden teeth on the gear, gear drive. If this mechanism had failed, the teeth would be sheared off and limiting the damage and controlling the failure without risking the entire pump engine unit. The Romanesque Revival exterior cladding was hand cut on site with locally sourced limestone. Using materials from the area certainly cut down on delivery costs, but also ensured durability. The facade looks amazing even today. And there's certainly a lot of knowledge that's been lost to the ages at River Station too. Even the wall profiles were thought through. Remember that in those days, the typical light source was candle power. And here the designers chose walls with a raised profile to promote light reflection in the deepest and darkest parts of the station. Every little bit of light counts when you're 100 feet down in a well jammed with pumps and the supporting frames. The River Pump Station was certainly a key part of the city of Cincinnati's water system, reducing typhoid by 90% in 1908. By these, these designers were playing for a much longer service life, probably over-designing a little bit, but look at what it got. 60 years of service. Remarkable. A little bit of over-design here bought them something that, that paid the city back infinitely. We live in a world of limited resources, and building things that last is important, not just for our infrastructure, but for the entirety of our society. When things last, it's the most responsible use of our natural resources. Keep in mind that there is a limited supply of carbon and iron atoms on Earth. Once those are used up, there are no more atoms to be found. Seeing what was done at River Station nearly 120 years ago inspires me to find a better way to design my projects. And it's clear that River Pump Station was infrastructure for the ages and was, in fact, built to last.